Search warrants alleged that Cascade dish detergent and pumpkin spice shower gel were used to mask the smell of Collins' body. Uh, Laverly pleaded guilty to a second-degree murder for her role in the killing and was sentenced to 32 years in prison. Uh, Fanon Tolerno pleaded not guilty. Um, he got out on bond. All right. They don't necessarily explain with more detail what happened. I mean, I guess the content creator here, uh, Seven Sins Crime, was pretty vocal with the horrifying things that were done to Mary which she said that she couldn't say um, okay this was the original article when the crime happened um Sorry, I'm just going through the article really quickly. Uh, she was just 20 years old when it happened. Uh, she actually really had the mentality of a 14, 15 year old and she had a severe speech impediment. So they, they just, they just, they targeted this person because they were already bullying her online and they just, they knew she was susceptible and that they could take advantage of her and have their way and that's what that's exactly what they did they i mean they stabbed her 133 times yeah they they knew what they were going to do to this person when they met up with her wow on march 28 2020 at the start of the statewide covid 19 lockdown police said kelly laverly and lavi fam lured collins to their noda apartment the couple sent an Uber because Collins didn't know how to drive. Pham and Collins had been friends in high school and briefly dated. Pham was now dating and living with Laverly. She thought she was going to hang up with her friends and they took her whole life away, William said. Uh, police believe Laverly, Pham, and their friend Jimmy Salerno brutally attacked Collins. The autopsy reports so, um, show she was stabbed more than 133 times. Uh, they tortured her and let her bleed to death and die and put her in the mattress and were hoping to dispose of the mattress with her body in there. Yeesh. Okay, it says her family believes Laverly and Pham got Collins sushi in the hours before they killed her and then posted a video of the three of them together to make it seem like Collins was fine. Her family believes it is the last video of Collins before she was killed. Uh... Collins' family maintains Laverly was a jealous, mean girl type and insists Laverly had been bullying Collins on social media for months. They say they saw awful comments on Facebook. Uh, Warrens say after the crime was committed, Salerno told a friend he had been at a party with Collins and that Laverly and Fam tied her up, beat her in a bathtub, and later hit her body in a mattress and were planning to burn the mattress. Wow. He told a friend casually at a party. No, that he had been at a party, but... Yeah, he just confessed to everything there, my guy. Uh, the witness went to the police. Also, it wasn't even Salerno that went to the police. I apologize. Previously, I had said that he was the one that went to the police. No, no. The friend who Salerno gave that information to was quick and smart to know that he didn't want to be involved in... Or that person didn't want to be involved in any of this. And... Uh, told on this dude that is exactly what I would have done I would have snitched on this person so quick it's not even funny so good for this uh, human being that went to uh, rat on this absolute monster and his group of other monsters um, okay so uh, that witness, witness went to the police the police then went to the Noda apartment where they saw fam agreed where they say fam agreed to let them do a search, even walking the detectives to the master bedroom. The detectives reportedly lifted the mattress, but somehow did not find Collins' wrapped up body still concealed there. Um, 
It says uh, the Charlotte McCl M McClenberg, sorry, it's a Charlotte McClenberg Police Department detective Brian Crum attributes that miss to how well the suspects did at hiding her body. Uh, two days after the initial consent search, the, uh, that witness and a, that witness and a second witness went down to CMPD headquarters to talk to police, insisting Collins's body was still in the mattress. This time around, detectives went in with a search warrant, leaving neighbors at the upscale Noda apartment complex shocked. Yep, they went uh, the way everything played out. It wasn't obvious. Um, they were shocked at how well she was concealed. They ultimately opened up the mattress in order to find her, and she was inside there. Hey, Duncan, how are you tonight? Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here. Um, well, I I'd actually started a little bit earlier, but I had some problems with the audio, and I had to restart the live stream again. So, yeah, it's been quite the interesting night, but I'm glad you're here. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you had a great holiday season. You too as well, Bushlight. Hope you had a great holiday season. Um Right now, we're just talking about the case of Mary Collins. Uh, she was found in a mattress because the people that invited her to hang out with them were complete monsters and just stabbed her 133 times and stuffed her into a mattress. And uh, we're at the point of the... Okay, so I'm, I'm just reading through the article here after having watched the TikTok video. And, uh, yeah, police went to the house the first time and they even lifted the mattress and everything and they couldn't find anything. And the person that one of the suspects confessed to insisted to the police that the body was in that mattress. And lo and behold, yep, 133 times. But lo and behold, the body was there and... That's where we are right now at this point. So they have already been arrested. And yeah, one of them is actually out on bond as of June 3rd, 2023. Unbelievable. I mean, pretty believable, obviously, because we're dealing with true crime cases. But uh, they definitely, they definitely had that planned already so something was already going to happen to this person beforehand and they just took the opportunity that she was hanging out with them to commit this crime against her wow very sad all right we'll move on to the next one let me get out of this part family. here because i just went into this person's account to be able to watch part two of the case that we were just watching uh uh-huh where's the back button no back button cool um some of these videos i i'm not gonna put because some of them are just like weird shit that don't make much sense um going down the rabbit hole of like weird conspiracy theories and whatnot and I'm, I'm good with that but uh i am gonna put this video though this specific gypsy rose video let me tell you something i have been following this whole gypsy rose thing on tiktok for like a week or two now i didn't even know she had her own tiktok account that has five million followers <laughs> But it's caused this huge uh, discussion and debate on TikTok, especially in the true crime world. Because there's people that are on her team and are happy that she's no longer in jail. And there's people that are pissed off that she's out and, that guy, and the guy that actually committed the crimes is not. I don't, I don't even know. I mean, first of all, having lived her whole life you know, thinking that she has, like, Munchha Munchausen and a whole bunch of, like, medication and it was child abuse. It just wasn't, like, child abuse like we know it, like, physical or something, but it was 
you know, mental, emotional. Her mom had her trapped inside basically the body of someone that her mom thought was sick. And it's it's horrible all around. I mean, yeah, the crime was committed, but I don't know. Like, part of me, you know, understands the crime, obviously. You know, it, it shouldn't have happened. But if you really think about it, I mean, she, she abused her kid. It, just imagine ha- being pumped with medication for the better half of your life. Um, all the time and then if it were kept a secret then I guess you know it would have been a little bit easier to manage but there's pictures of her like all across social media during all that time there's videos she was in a commercial she was in a uh, make a wish uh, list or whatever the hell it is like she was visited by them and whatnot. she had a whole bunch of money sent to her she was on the news a whole bunch in her town. So there's a lot of videos of Gypsy during that time. So just think of it this way. She has to live with that shame and embarrassment for the rest of her life. And everyone else saw it as well. It's not like she can hide it and reimagine herself. Like Everyone knows who she is. That's why she has 5 million followers. One of her videos has 9 million views. That is crazy. But... Yeah, I don't know. Let me know in the comment section what you think. This Again, it's a pretty divisive thing. I've seen lives of people having arguments with one another about, oh, this is a sign of privilege and this and that. And the other side is like, no, she deserves to be free. She did her time. If that was the time that was given to her by the court system and she did it and is released, then that's it. I mean, she, she did her time and she paid the price. She's out. That's how the justice system works. That's how the prison system works. I mean, you do your time and you're released. I mean, if anything, you guys have to take that with the court system that only gave her that amount of time. I don't know. Uh, I do know that a lot of people go crazy with all of this. Uh, let's see. I don't agree with her doing that. Abuse uh, judging because the parents she was different. The damn doctor should have done something. That is true. That is true. I mean, technically, she, technically, she didn't kill her mom per se she had someone else do it which is i i think that's why she had that the reduced time as opposed to him the boyfriend that had that crazy amount of time uh because he actually committed the murder but i don't know nonetheless i I do think that she did do her time if anything it was the court system that gave her that amount of time if they felt that she had to be there for more than what she did then the court system should have Give her that amount of time. But yeah, she's out. And she has like a whole new life. And she has like a boyfriend. And I don't know, man. Could you imagine you giving your undying love to someone so much so that you would commit a crime for that person. And then you're just sitting in jail, switching channels on a TV. They're probably sharing with other people and just so happened to see on the news that Gypsy Rose Blanchard the person that you committed a crime for is now free and not only free is now married to someone else and publicly said that she no longer feels anything for you now that now that's fucked up (laughs) now that's fucked up right there I don't know about you but that is one way to Bring someone down, let me tell you. Yikes. And, yeah, men and women are treated so differently in the court system. They are. They are. She was the catalyst. She was the catalyst. And now she's... Yep. Uh, uh, Bush Light, we have a very um, old saying back home, and it says... uh, I'll say it in Spanish and I'll, I'll translate it for you. And it says, los, uh, lo, los pelos del toto jalan más que la yunta de un buey. And that is, the hair on a pussy attracts more than the, what is it, the metal that they put on horses and donkeys? 
so that you can put them on a one of those rollers and shit. It's hard to translate those old and stuff, but I completely un agree with you and uh, yeah, that's no lie. You 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 say no lie there, Bush. At all, we've all been victims of that. <laughs> but wow! But to what point, though? I mean, again, just just imagine that scenario, which is what I imagined when I saw that she was going to be released. Like that dude just sitting in jail. Like, wow! I could have easily not done this for this person, and you, he would have been free right now. He would have been enjoying the pleasures of the world, eating steak and whatnot. Yeah, he's in jail. And um, let's just check out this video real quick. This was posted, what was it? Uh, December 29th, 2023. Gypsy, Ro Gypsy Rose Blanchard has been seen in public for the first time since her release on Thursday as she checked out of a hotel to begin her life as a free woman. The 32-year-old Munchausen by proxy victim was spotted leaving a Fairfield Inn and Suites in Missouri where she had stayed overnight shortly after walking free from prison almost 12 hours earlier. The couple then drove to a mall in a convoy of cars including producers and a camera crew that have been following the abuse victim around for their lifetime show, where Blanchard bought two pairs of sneakers. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Right. And she's, I, I think she's also writing a book now as well. Damn. Isn't that something, huh? Well, I guess that's how it goes. Um, doesn't he remind me, doesn't he remind you of Jared the subway guy before the incident? Not after. Before the incident. When he first started. Kind of does look like him. I don't know. He used to like wear glasses like that and whatnot. But she's out. And yeah. I think she has like kids now as well. Doesn't she? Or I, I, I don't even know. This world is so weird. What a weird situation. And her mom's still dead? It's crazy. All right, moving on. Uh, this, I just uh, took this from the Daily Mail. I want to talk about one of the most uncomfortable movies I've seen this year. Because it's based on the real-life story of the 34-year-old teacher who groomed and preyed upon her 12-year-old student. And I want to show you a particularly disturbing part where the movie mirrors real life. And just a heads oh, up, this shit, is a very sensitive subject, about? but I cover a lot of stuff on this page for people with dark curiosity, so follow along. So the movie I'm talking about is called May, December. It's on Netflix. And in it, Julianne Moore plays a woman named Gracie who met her current husband when he was just 12 years old and she was his 34-year-old teacher. And this is all based on the case of Mary Kay Letourneau who did the exact same thing. Letourneau was sent to jail for three months after she became pregnant with 13-year-old Billy Falau's child. She was ordered to never make contact with Billy again, but shortly after she was released, the two were seen together. And then she spent over seven years in jail where she gave birth to their second child. And upon release, the two married. Oh and years God. later, the two gave a really upsetting interview where Mary said this. No, but I don't need to know him in this discussion. He's the child. Who was I'm the talking boss? about you. Who was the boss? Who was the boss? What? Who was the boss back you know, then? No, I was being pursued. Who was the boss back then? It's upsetting to watch Mary basically tell him that it's his fault all this happened, but the movie mirrors this in a really interesting way. I, I remember this. What if I was too young? this is mary never thought she did anything wrong she insists that the rules were different back then and that it was only grooming if it was an adult man doing it to a small girl and when the interviewer specifically asks her if she was a p-word she says this because he wasn't prepubescent he wasn't a child and we have anyways it's oh, yeah, very upsetting but if you can stomach it the movie does a great job of getting into the little nuances of a relationship like that and i thought it was fascinating i want to talk about one of the most I actually remember when this happened. And I think that there's another famous case of a teacher that had the same incident happen and they later on uh, married for a short period of time as well, but they ended up like separating and she was obsessed with him. Yeah, that's, that's, it's, I don't think people realize that it, it's, it's both ways. 
yeah, there are a huge amount of pedophiles that are, like, men. But there are a lot of women as well. And let me tell you something. I don't know if it's when I was growing up, all the teachers that I had were butt ugly. But I don't remember growing up, like, during my, like, my time in school ever having uh, I guess like younger teachers they were always really old and whatnot so I don't know after a certain period of time during the 90s on is when we have seen a lot more of these cases popping up because this is this is a problem like this shit happens a lot more than what it's supposed to <laughs> I, uh, that's all I can say. I went into the uh, one of the true crime websites I, I read a few weeks ago, and it was littered with cases of teachers that do the same exact thing. And what's more concerning is people in the same breath will say that it's wrong and extremely wrong when a man does it to a girl, but in the same breath will say that oh you know but all all boys and all guys would would have wanted that to happen to them bro that shit's abuse that's like straight up that's that's pedophilia like right there like oh your teachers were hot yo none of my teachers were hot i didn't have that at all but I still remember Miss Garcia. Yo, Miss Garcia was not a sight to see. Uh uh. I had another teacher. What was her name? Like Miss Adams or some shit like that. Ooh. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh. Not even like in the in the not even like in a milf gilf kind of way. No 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 no. I'm talking about like, no, <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah. But and on a more serious note, it's it's the same. Like it's it's. It's both like Duncan mentioned. It's they're both chomos. Like it's it's both sides. It's they should be held to the same punishment on both ends. But I feel like when it comes to boys, when it happens to them, it's like it's like permissible at at some point. You know, like it's it's not viewed so wrong as it is viewed when it's the other way and it should be completely equal on both ends because it's as traumatizing for a boy as it is for a girl so i don't know i don't know that's that's like my two cents on it i I wish that people would take it a lot more serious and uh i mean she she married him like just imagine like the other way around. I mean, only talking about like Woody Allen and his whole situation brings a bit of like puke to my stomach, like to my throat, like oh, because yeah, he that's ex- that's exactly what he did. He groomed his stepdaughter and he married her later on, and we can all collectively say that that is pretty disgusting. Yet there are some people that would look at something like this and they wouldn't find anything wrong with it. Like yeah, you know. Hey, you know, it happens. Oh, lucky guy, lucky dude, lucky boy. But like, bro, that's crazy. That is something that I wish these people would not reproduce because, like, who knows what they would allow to happen to their own children if you would think that about a child. I don't know, man. That's horrible. Oh, you graduated in 1987. Great year. That's a great year. I was three. I was three. Yep. Yep. You're however many however many years old, young. Because 1987 was a few days ago. Time passes pretty quickly. That's all I can say. Oh, Miss Armstrong. Oh, you're stuck in 1985? Oh, uh, Duncan, you were born in '87. I was born in '84. So, yeah, I'm 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 turning forty this year. 
I'll be honest with you, it's been great. I I've had my my thirties have been so wonderful, even with its ups and downs, and everything that's happened to me in the last ten years. If I could go back in time, I'd go back in time to me turning thirty and being able to relive my thirties all over again. I mean, who knows? Maybe my forties will be even better. Uh, I mean, given the state of the world right now, but my thirties have been pretty wonderful. How are your thirties been, Duck? And, and how were your thirties, Bush? Let me know in the comment section. I'd love to know. Yikes. Again, I hope everyone is judged with the same at the same level because this is crazy to to just like they got married and had kids, two children, like two kids. And she completely gaslit him and told him that he was the one that seduced her. That is insane. I actually want to watch this now. I think Julianne Moore is an ex amazing actress. So I, I'm definitely going to have to check it out. Sign back up to Netflix. All right, let's move on to the next video. Oh, I think I saw this. Sound alert. Down a little bit. Oh boy. What's going on with them? I'm going to jail. I love y'all. What? I love y'all. What you mean? Friends, today's classless bastard is Sean Taria Jones. In 2018, she and her friend Shailen Yeldon, with an acquaintance called Kima, went to meet Daquan Berry. However, he ends up dead. So what happened? Well, let's see what she says. Do I think that you're a cold-blooded murderer? Yes. Do I think <laughs> Do I think your girlfriends who are with you are cold-blooded murderers? Absolutely not. I know what cold-blooded murderers are. You sit in the same seat with many of them now. Mm -hmm. Okay? Y'all are young. Very. Exactly. Whole lot ahead of you. Very pretty. However, good things happen to bad people. Or bad things happen to good people sometimes, is what I'm trying to say. And whatever happened that night, I mean, too much technology, too many people out there, too much social media, right. too much everything, okay? Now, yeah, this guy, he's out here selling weed, yeah. all right? If he wasn't out there selling weed, would he have gotten killed that night? Probably not. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we put ourselves in bad people who get killed, put themselves in bad places sometimes. Not always, but a lot of times they doing something wrong. Yeah. All right. And here you are, three girls. You don't know if you're going to get jacked. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. All right. So once we work this murder, all right, and we start compiling our information, autopsy, shell casings, evidence at the scene, phone, Facebook, mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. All right. I like to say when we bring you in here, I say, you can tell the story for us. Or if you don't, when we go to court, I'm going to tell it for you. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, regardless of this kid, 19-year-old kid, okay, young kid, all right, regardless of whatever he was, he was still a son. He was still a brother. He was still an uncle. True. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he was a grandchild. All right. And nobody has the right to take anybody's life. Do accidents happen? Absolutely. That's why we're sitting here today, because we have done our homework. Mm -hmm. All right. Because we have Shay on her way in. Mm -hmm. And we have Kima on her way in. All right. And we have your car. We have your car seized. We seized your car. Today. Yeah, okay. I seen that and I'm like How did you see that? How you know well, that? I didn't see that. They told me when I was sitting on the porch right before I came yeah, here. We see your car. And uh of course the first thing your lovely boyfriend. Okay, it's part one. Let's watch part two. This is a of Crime Watch Seven. Um I'll be honest with you, I love watching interrogation videos. Some of them are long, so you have to have a lot of patience with them. Some content creators chop them up 
and put like the the best parts but some of them are extremely interesting especially when the cases are really really um bad the interrogators have to put their own emotions to the side which is an extremely hard thing to do and they have to train to be able to get to that point but they have to swallow all that and ask questions and try to get answers to something that you know nine times out of ten they have the evidence already there and they they kind of know where the the course of the whole case is going but having to ask those questions and you know many times it's things that have to do with like kids and shit and a lot of these interrogators have their own families and I can only imagine having to hear for example like the Chris Watts interrogation case uh, the interrogation video you can tell that the interrogator was swallowing pretty hard because he, I know I know that he wanted to get emotional about it. He, he probably has like daughters of his own and he had to put that to the side to try to ask these questions to someone that could have potentially killed his whole family and keep a straight face while doing it. That is, that's insane. I, I sometimes like to imagine what happens afterwards and I, I think I base it like off of I've, I've seen on movies and shit so um, like the interrogator will finish up the, the questioning and will lock himself in the bathroom and stuff and go through like a dramatic scene and you know whatever a lot of them like, tend to drink a lot too you know gotta take your mind off of certain things cause after you hear things over and over again that's you grow kinda numb to it but if you don't grow numb to it, then it just continuously affects you. And it's just a drop of water that's being put into this glass that's at one point just going to overfill. That's why they have to take like therapy and shit. It's crazy. It's crazy being an uh, 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 like a interrogator. I had said investigator previously, you know, an interrogator. Chris Watts is a sick motherfucker, but he did to those baby girls. Oh, yeah. Oh, you've been married to the same woman for 20, 28 years. I have, uh, I've been married to mine for 16. Mm-hmm. Same as you, faithfully. Um, are you on the good end now? Nice. That's a, that is some pretty predatory behavior. I, I hate Chris Watt so much. I really do. I, I mention him a lot. Not, not in a good way, but normally in cases when it has to do with families and whatnot, because of just how severe that case was and just how bad that whole situation uh, ended up being. And to this day, there's still things that are popping up. And, you know, there's someone on YouTube that follows that case to this day. And, yeah, I, I think the last thing I... I read about it was that uh, something that had to do with the woman he was cheating on, Shanann, which is his wife, uh, who she was something that had to do with her and it was discovered like I guess she had had conversations with Shanann previously, I don't know could all be bullshit uh, people like to make things up for clickbait and whatnot let's see what is this this is the home video that left thousands speechless in the 90s. Let's see if it'll leave us speechless as well. This is from unanswered.crimes. Let's see. This video is about a half hour long video that supposedly was sourced from a VHS tape that was found in the late 1980s or maybe even early 1990s. It was dubbed and redubbed for circulation and sale among bootleg collectors often under the table at horror conventions or through mail order tape trading communities. As you might find her on the jaw, you might be left out. Okay, so when you, uh, so when you, uh, so when you, so when you bring out the jaw, so I'll show you later, I'm in the real, um, um, confident self. Sometimes the tape was even sold in a video compilation along with other gruesome home videos, okay, often the video bearing about? the title, Ensuring Your Place in Hell. So you can lose it real fast, all right? So when you find it, okay, the 
jaw is usually like that, and around this shape, okay? It's like the source of the original footage, as well as the identity of the young man in the video, still remains unknown, even up to three decades later. Ooh, that sucked. So everyone, it's just... Oh, I think this is the one... Is this the one that they found? Oh, I don't want to put that... But I don't, it doesn't have any actual... Oh, it does? To explain the backstory to this whole thing. This happened in Grays, England. In the early mornings, a truck drove by uh, an industrial estate containing human cargo, except none of the people inside were alive. This truck was parked somewhere random, and pretty soon, not the police, five ambulances came and inspected the truck. They found a total of 39 bodies that were lifeless inside of the truck. Holy pretty soon, shit. the police came and tried to piece together what actually happened as well as taking the truck over to be examined and taken in for evidence the only person right now that was detained was a 25 year old who was driving the truck he was arrested for suspicion of murder and he supposedly came from ireland as the detectives found irish stickers on his window detectives also found out that the truck could have possibly came from ireland but as of right now nobody knows what exactly happened some people say that this was just a bad case of human smuggling. And others say that the 25-year-old killed a total of 39 people and stuffed it in the back of the cargo truck. Either way, both are bad. I can follow for more. Great information. Content creator is called Your Mind is Mine. I just wish he had lowered the volume on the music so we could understand what he's saying a lot more. Recurring theme you know, they true crime videos, though, because if you're talking, you should want to have the music as background, not overpowering what you're saying, but I don't know. That's just me. Uh, this is from the Interrogation Vault. Uh, we'll check out a few more videos, and then um, we'll call it a night. I will be live again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for True Crime Daily Cases. Um, our regular old reading through and discussing cases that we find on the website True Crime Daily. So that's tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I'm guessing if you're anywhere from Nevada on, times change, literally. So what is it? It could be 12 if you're in the East Coast, 11 if you're sort of in the Midwest mid portion of the u.s bam that'd be the time but on my end it's 9 a.m pacific standard time and i will be live again for true crime daily tomorrow um let's watch this one again this is the interrogation fault let's see what this short video is about right where in our neighborhood down our main street is she good no, no she's not she's dead that's why this is very important it's all on you right now this is my problem. You were the last, last one. Last one seen with her. So right now, it's a lot of it's facing you. Wait, uh, these old high school footage of a guy building a bunker kills the family. Oh, it's eleven forty-six. Dang, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. It is pretty late. It's eight forty-nine here as we speak. Uh, but I appreciate you being here, Bush Light. Uh, old VHS footage of a guy building a bunker kills neighbor's husband, kid, and kidnaps his wife. Let's see. Is it a, a Bush the Prepper family killer? Oh. Okay, let's see.
Okay, so it says, that, um, it's from 2012. I'm reading off of, uh, what is it, CNN.com. It says, Chilling Video Diary Shows Man's Plan to Kill Family. It says, a video diary released Thursday gave, uh, gives an eerie view into the planning process of a man police say murdered his wife and daughter and then killed himself in a bunker he built in the woods in Washington State. Is it that one, Bush? Oh, let me know in the comment section. It says, uh, Peter Keller, 41, shot and killed his wife, Lynette Keller, and their 18-year-old daughter, Kayleen Keller, and then set a fire in their Seattle area home in April. Uh, again, this is 2012. Uh, the King County Sheriff's Office said, A video diary Keller left behind touched on his decision to kill his family, but still gave little information about his reasons. Oh, let's see, so it's not, not this one. So it's not Peter Keller. I did see another one here. Let me see. Uh, oh, maybe it is the same one. Okay, let me see. I'm going into Reddit to see what Reddit has to say. Um, I think it's the same one. They're talking about Peter Keller. Uh, but he did he did build a bunker. It says, uh, someone wrote that they had just finished watching an incredibly eerie video about Peter Keller, an avid video diary enthusiast and survivalist, who would regularly record a video of his family life, holidays, and events such as his daughter's graduation. Disturbingly, he also documented his plan for, quote-unquote, the end, in a videotape found by the authorities in his bunker. In the video, we see him building his bunker in Rattlesnake Ridge, Washington, which he had reportedly been building and prepping for since 2004. In the recordings, we hear his thoughts about life, the process of building the bunker, and his plans to murder his family. Yeesh. Uh, the tape was found among a stockpile of ammunition and weapons, improvised explosive devices, and his bulletproof vest. He also had about 45 pounds of beans, wine-making stuff, vodka, propane, gasoline, food, soap, and other supplies in his bunker. Uh, when his bunker was finally complete in April 2012, Keller murdered his wife, Lynette, 41, and daughter, Kayleen, by shooting both women in the head with a silenced pistol. Uh, he then set fire to their home to cover the crimes before fleeing to the underground bunker. After a couple of weeks hiding out in his bunker, he was located by a SWAT team after they saw smoke from his heating system rising up through the trees. Following a 22-hour following a standoff, he killed himself. Something he had vowed he would always do before getting caught. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, let me know tomorrow, Bush. But this one's still pretty interesting as well. I, I, I did not know that this happened. He built a bunker and everything. Wow. It's crazy. That's like a, that's like a whole thing now. Um, my wife's boss, uh, he was telling us that he lives in San Francisco and the house next to him uh, not the house next to him like two or three houses down someone bought that property and they started building a bunker underneath crazy i guess these rich some rich people or some people are catching on catching on to things that the general population is not catching on yet and they're building these bunkers i don't know but yeah let me know bush tomorrow i would love to be able to read about that case because it sounds pretty interesting. This Peter Teller case, I'm going to leave open because I want to check out this documentary uh, later on tonight. I'll, I'll watch it with my wife because it seems pretty interesting. He apparently did a whole bunch of vlogs. So there, there's a YouTube video that has like a compilation of all of them, I guess. And that's what I'm going to watch afterwards. Uh, quick reminder, I do have a Discord. Remember that Discord server? Uh, join in. That's a KAS. It's discord.com slash KAS true crime. Uh, we watch documentaries, true crime cases, horror movies, uh, weird shit. I really love aliens, um, like weird horror mythologies, uh, history that's weird and just out of this world, which... There's a whole bunch of it. And any other strange shit that you're interested in, I'm probably interested in too. So uh, join that Discord. Again, you can find the link in the description box. If you're watching me on Twitch, it's in the About section. If you're watching me on Facebook, it's also in the About section as well. So 
check it out. It's free. Definitely join, and we can um, have a conversation there and be entertained at the same time. But um, nonetheless, I'm going to keep this one open here. We're going to watch two more videos, and then I'll call it a night. I am getting hungry. And I have no Snickers bars around here to help me with said hunger. <laughs> and uh, as always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Your time is very precious. And the fact that you are here spending one second with me, that means the world to me. So thank you. You right now, son. This is Aiden Fucci, a 14-year-old boy from Florida, being questioned by his parents at a police station in 2021. 14, Aiden is huh? being held and questioned under suspicion of murdering his 13-year-old classmate, Tristan Bailey. Something he ins... I, I, I don't think I've heard about that falling light. Did you hear about what happened in Miami today? I don't know. There's been talk about aliens for quite some time now. And people reported seeing 10-foot tall beings weird shit in a mall in miami which is already kind of weird in and of itself the the story but uh yeah that happened like what was it yesterday or today and people are freaking the fuck out there was like cops outside of the mall and everything and there's like first-hand witnesses of people saying like yeah dude i saw them i saw it they were huge what they were doing at a mall i don't know I have no idea, but I, I'm interested in all that, all this weird stuff. I don't dive deep into, like, conspiracy theories and whatnot, because when I was growing up, conspira conspiracy theories had some sort of, like, truth to it. Now, people just make shit up for anything. So I, I try to kind of steer clear from that, but I do like anything else that, like, aliens fucking horror movies like I mentioned before mythologies um old like I, I do like old government conspiracy theories though those are pretty awesome and you know like the MK Ultras and all that shit and all those experiments they used to do back in the day and um what was it the other one like battleships that have gone missing and stuff I find that very much interesting too um if you find it interesting too, then you found a mutual here because that's me. Yeah. Um, Alright, let's watch this one. Currently, you don't have to check it out. It landed in the backyard. They described the same thing. 10 foot tall. Oh, they, oh, they did, huh? 10 foot tall creatures as well? Yeah. Hey, they're getting new Air Jordans at the mall. They were chilling at the mall. They didn't have anything to do. And they were just wandering around uh, window shopping. They couldn't afford anything because they don't have money. They're aliens. They don't understand currency. So they were just wandering around in the mall trying to humanize themselves. Seeing what, what all the fuss is about. <laughs> Listen. I don't know, man. This The planet in and of itself is pretty big. Let alone everything else that surrounds us. So, you know, why wouldn't there be aliens here? That's, uh, I don't know. That's, I, I think that it's a given that they, they are here on Earth and they've been here for quite some time. I don't think that they had anything to do with anything that human beings achieved. I, I wouldn't take it to that point, but I do think that, why not? Everything is possible. That they're getting a lot more audacious lately, and I feel like they do want to be seen, and things are going to start changing at some point. Who knows? The closest representation to what I think would be realistic, if that were to ever happen, is the movie Arrival. I think that they did such a great job at portraying how society and how human beings would react to something so big as extraterrestrial beings visiting Earth. It's pretty crazy. They did a great job. Your dad was an MP in the Air Force. He saw UFOs shaped like cigars. What? Uh, there's a part in um, Dominican Republic where they, they hover a lot over and 
Yeah, there's been my, like, I have, like, uncles and aunts that have told me that they've seen some weird shit in the skies. There's places here in California as well that you can, you can see them. I just wish that they would, I wish that it would be something a lot more concrete and we could have better answers to things. And that would also answer the question of, you know, whether or not people were lying about being abducted by extraterrestrial beings. Because if that does happen, then yeah, we should be giving these people a lot more credibility than what we've given them up to this point. There's like a whole association of of people that have been abducted by aliens, and it's it's a pretty big community. I I saw someone talking about it on uh, TikTok. Um, yeah, um, it would prove them correct, and it would take us one step further to answering a whole bunch of questions. Uh, but I, I I think I think at some point, who knows? Maybe not in our lifetime. Maybe so, but at some point there's going to be some sort of direct communication with extraterrestrial beings and whatnot. Of course, I think they're already here. Yeah, listen. Uh, I think that if they were here, I think that they would be probably hiding in oceans. As opposed to them being integrated into society, I think they would be hiding in the most remote places that human beings would never be able to find them. Like Antarctica or some shit like that, or the depths of the ocean where human beings can't touch that down there. I don't know. It'd be, I don't know. It's a little harder for me to think that they are already integrated into society, but who knows? Who knows? There's some celebrities that are kind of weird looking. <laughs> But yeah, nonetheless, I think they would, in my opinion, I think they're all in the ocean. And they they have, like, settlements down there and shit. You can imagine anything you want about the ocean. It doesn't really matter, because we haven't discovered anything so deep yet. So, for all we know, there could be, Atlantis could be down there. And we would we have no idea. So, I deviated from topic. But I, I like all this weird shit because it's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, think about it, Duncan. If you were to want to hide from human beings, think about it. Where would you pick that you know for a fact that you would never be discovered by humans? You can't go to the top of a mountain because we have like helicopters and shit. can't really hide in a cave and whatnot because we could be able, they could be able to find you. It wouldn't be so hard to discover someone in that situation or discover extraterrestrial beings. But in the ocean, it'd be nearly impossible. But if they are extraterrestrial beings, then they have way more advanced technology than we do. So, who knows? I don't. I don't. Let me see. Let's see what it says. I think I have. Let's see. He's, um, okay, I don't think it's this person. I think it's this person. It says UFO witness. I'm trying to see. Okay, I'm reading about the, a movie that was made in 2013 called Mirage Men. And it's a documentary film about, uh, well, it prominently features Richard Dottie, a retired special agent who worked for AFOSI, the United States Air Force Office of Special Investigation. Uh, let's see what it says. Um, nice, has positive reviews, scary, unsettling, and offered profound food for thought. Okay, but what is it about? Okay, it says, um, okay, so Mirage Men suggest, suggests there was conspiracy by the U.S. military to fabricate UFO folklore in order to deflect attention from classified military projects. Hmm. Okay. Wow, that sounds pretty interesting. 
And you know what? Uh, do you work? Do you work for the United States military? Right now, false information about U.S. Interesting. I I had no idea who this person was, but I am definitely going to check out this documentary. And let me tell you something. It's just it, all it takes is just reading. Taking the time to read books about just the lengths that the government goes to do shit. Yeah, so I I would not put it past the government. Not one bit. Nope. All the contrary. It doesn't surprise me one bit that the government would do something like this. <laughs> not one bit. Mm -mm. I'm definitely going to watch this. I'm going to check this out. Maybe it's on YouTube. Thank you so much for recommending this, Bush Light. I really appreciate it. Dude, both of you guys are awesome. I'm so glad you're here. Hopefully I can find some clips on the tubes. Oh, it's actually on to on YouTube. Let me see. Are they gonna make me pay for it? Nice. Okay. Let me just make sure that this is the actual documentary. Yep, this is it. Here, Duncan. That's the link for the documentary. Or so I think it is. Hmm. It's supposed to be free. Oh, oh well, I'll have it here. I'll watch it. Yes. Oh, I absolutely love this. I, I love this very, very much. Okay, we're gonna we'll finish watching this video and then I'll I'll end the live stream. I'm gonna make dinner watching this documentary. I like watching things while I cook, so this is gonna be the next thing I'm gonna uh, check out. Sam Rajman takes you on a journey through the badlands and backwaters of America. Mark Pilkinson and John Lundberg, based on their best-selling book, uncover a 60-year-old story stranger than any conspiracy thriller. For over 60 years. Teams within the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Intelligence Services exploited and manipulated beliefs about UFOs and extraterrestrial visits as, as part of their counterintelligence programs. In doing so, they spawned a mythology so powerful that it captivated and warped many brilliant minds, including several of their own. Now, for the first time, some of those behind these operations and their victims speak out, revealing a true story that is part Mancurian candidate and part close encounters of the third kind. Sold. Especially with that last sentence, Mancurian candidate and part close encounters of the current of the third kind. Yep. I'm definitely watching this. Oh yeah. Breaking news. Authorities have now confirmed okay. the weapon. We already watched this one. If he truly died this way, then he died in one of the worst deaths imaginable. Alright, whatever. We'll end, it. We'll end it with is advised. Mikey. Pictured here was 23-year-old Duncan McPherson. He was born in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. He had dreams of becoming an NHL player. He was actually a first-round pick of the New York Islanders. But because of several injuries, he never actually made it to the NHL. In August of 1989, he would travel to the Stubai Alps, which is in Austria. He was actually intending to go to Scotland, but he passed through here on his way. He was expected to make it to Scotland on August 12th, but he never arrived. Six weeks later, the car that he borrowed from a friend was found at the Stubai Ski Resort. So they spoke to the people at the resort and they said that in fact was there. To them, it appeared that he was going to do some snowboarding before he continued his trip. But nobody knew where he was. He just vanished. So he was reported missing and he would be missing for 14 years. Oh, in 2003, some people nearby saw a glove sticking out of a melting glacier. In the middle of that glacier, McPherson's remains. I can't. You know, it's crazy that. Um, Mount, is it, 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 yeah, it is Mount Everest. There are a whole bunch of like frozen bodies on the trail. That's crazy. That That's. That is so insane to me. Someone made a TikTok video. Uh, on, like they recorded on a part of the trail that's kind of like um, 
sort of like a like frozen like fast land and whatnot. It's it's like completely, uh, like it's, it's completely like straight. You you can walk on it and whatnot. It's not like a trail going up, and you can see tents and legs like sticking out and whatnot. Not a lot, but it's like one or two of them. But on the trail towards like the tip of the mountain and whatnot, there's like different like. Um, corpses just like frozen there the people that didn't make it it's pretty treacherous to get up there and there's a lot of people that like taking that risk um i i'm not one of them uh and after watching those videos and specifically there's like one that's like very very famous uh a famous mountain hiker and his his corpse has been there for like 20 some odd years frozen crazy it, it just Hearing uh, him say this reminding me of of that. I can't show those images because, you know, TikTok. His arms had both been amputated. So were both his hands and both his legs. His body was quite literally in pieces. Now, apparently there is some science behind the fact that if a body is inside of like a glacier like this, I guess a body can, can separate. But, but based on the actual bones, and where the injuries and fractures were, and this is also the, his snowboard that was found inside the glacier with him. Oh, and you can see that it has some severe, like, cutting on it. This is another image where you can see the damage to the snowboard. They also found his wallet, which in there they found cards with particular damage. It looked like the teeth of a tiller on a snow tilling machine. So these teeth right there oh, shit. the machine that in question also has this on it very large machine with a lot of machinery and very large metal claw things when experts looked at his bones they determined that there was no way that his body had separated through the natural process of like it being stuck in a glacier like that they said his bones were separated could only be explained by machinery. So this is what they think happened. This is an image from the mountain he would have been snowboarding on. Oh, this is the tilling machine they would have used. They believe that Dustin somehow got injured on that mountain. They believe it was very foggy. And as he was lying on the ground waiting for help, oh, the shit. tilling machine ran over his body, tearing him to pieces. They said it would have peeled the skin off of his bones. It would have ripped his limbs off. These parts right here would have absolutely annihilated his body. Not only would he be crushed to death, but he's also dealing with the agony of having his skin peeled off of his body, his limbs being torn off. Now, one could only hope that if this was how he died, that he didn't experience it for too long, that hopefully he would have died fairly quickly, but they, don't, they can't say for sure. It would have been probably pretty foggy, hard for the driver to see. They did confirm they were driving these with skiers on the mountain. It would have been so loud, he wouldn't have heard the blood curdling screams of the man he was destroying. I was reading that one of his legs could have possibly, just based on this, could have gotten stuck in this machine before it was taken off. And it like basically just rotated it until his leg was like pulled off. They were even able to determine Goodness. that he was likely alive for a little bit of this because there were certain damage to his bones that indicated he tried to remove himself from the machine. But they can't say that for sure. They can't confirm that this is the way he actually died, but the evidence shows and proves that it was likely done by a machine and not by some natural method. So what they oh, believe happened God. is either the driver realized what happened after the fact, was afraid of possibly losing his job and being, you know, going to trial for manslaughter because he had broken safety protocols, or they think maybe he was drunk. And again, the whole trial and manslaughter stuff. They even think he may have had help from a supervisor basically move the body to where it was eventually found. Again, they can't confirm it, but that is the ultimate likelihood. And if that is the way he died, Jesus Christ. I sincerely hope. I, ha I have to just believe that he did not feel it for too long because that is hell on earth and I would wish that on nobody. 
Holy shit. Wow. I mean, if it was foggy, it could have been so many things. It could have been that, yeah, he... He could have, like, bare minimum, sprained his ankle. Was lying there in the snow and maybe he didn't realize that that snow, mach that snow power machine was passing by. It could have well been what he said, that the guy was drunk or... He had help moving the body, but that is, that's brutal. Wow. I mean, just look at the image. Like, his, his, his femur is completely broken in half.